so I have to live up to Ron's expectation, but it's not going to be a lullaby. So I hear you had a very intense day today. So I'm just going to start off with a small song. What do you think? <clears throat> Oh, Anita Bobo. Jerusalem, Kiki Alami. Nee, on the Tuesday. Ooh, I'm the Nari. Dunga Yigishi Hilaka. Jerusalem, Kiki Alami. Nee, on the Tuesday. to have a little bit of musical interlude all good stuff all right all good okay um i think ron said about um blockchain and identity so what i'm going to talk about uh you know ron also mentioned you know uh, bleeding edge and leading and some people think blockchain is a bleeding edge blockchain is something that had all the hype, but uh, you know, never realized its full potential. Uh, but what I'm going to talk about is just not blockchain, but uh, a little bit leveraging blockchain for something bigger. So let's start with. Uh... So, so Raj, what I think, in all seriousness, is that you know, there's the the cryptocurrencies, the dark web. You know, maybe it's a real thing. Maybe it's the tulip crisis of Holland in the 1600s. Unclear. I think there are more people thinking cryptocurrencies is, is um, the Generation Z's version of um, gold. But putting that aside, what what people do believe is that um, the NFT phenomenon. I'm curious your thoughts, Raj, with all these. You know, digital images now being sold using blockchain, that seems to be the catalyst for making blockchain real, my opinion. Yeah, I mean, the, the activities that you see quite a bit are sort of the non-fungible tokens. Like you said, someone selling a cat for $150,000 as a digital asset, um, and then a lot of gaming, and then what they call DeFi, like decentralized financial systems, where, you know, people are trying to eliminate some of the middle layer, right? The biggest thing about blockchain, the reason I got fascinated is there is a fundamental principle of eliminating the middleman. Like think about everything that we do from your Uber to your Airbnb to your banks, there is people taking percentage of everything that they do. But what blockchain, the potential for blockchain is it's decentralized. When you look at it, like let's think about Bitcoin. Who owns Bitcoin? Everybody, right? The, the servers are running with 8,000 nodes. Everybody's running uh, these decentralized nodes. No one is the authority. No one is taking a cut as part of this. You know, you, you want to order a food, do dash one, 20% up, right? But what blockchain has the potential is to decentralize, and then uh, people who provide services get recognized and then get paid for, right? So they, in spite of all this hype about uh, non-fungible tokens and uh, games, 
to me, we need to find business applications for blockchain. I think that's what's going to make it mainstream. Yeah, for a while, people might get excited about the cats and dogs selling for $250,000, but what's the business value? What, how can you take the technology and apply it to business scenarios? And what we are going to talk about is one such case, right? So uh, when we say decentralized digital identity, and then the verifiable credentials is a bigger picture than the identity, but it requires identity. So what do I mean by verifiable credentials? Just think about uh, your degree, or uh, let's say you went and took a course, you attended runs, the big sessions, and then you want to be uh, known for it, right? Some credible way of verifying you attended, you were not multitasking because it's a, a go to webinar, but you know you did something and you need somebody to verify that. So that credential as a service is what we are going to be talking about. Some of the things that Microsoft is doing, standards that are being developed. Uh, that's what we want to talk about. And identity is going to be a core component of that, right? So this is what we're going to cover. What is this? Uh, probably I might start off with why do we need decentralized ID? And then what's the connection between decentralized ID and blockchain? Where does blockchain come to picture? How does it work? And then I have a little demo to show you. And then what's coming next, right? It's still in early stages. Yeah, so identity was never uh, meant to be part of the internet. You know, that's why anybody does everything. Some people hide. That's why you see a lot of monkeys tweeting, which we've seen last year, and some uh, declaring who they are, some hiding. The internet was never meant to be that, to know who did it, but just to do it, right? And uh, but on the other hand, our day-to-day -day life scenarios are where we need to kind of establish our identity, but yet we don't want to sell it, right? It's uh, like, I don't, like, uh, I have a personal experience, you know, like my wife is in the healthcare business. Every time she has to work for a hospital, these guys make it sign 100 paperwork to try and establish that she got the degree in five different places. She has already done it, and then the hospital has already approved it. But a new hospital, she has to go and say, yeah, I got my degree here and fill out the paperwork. So our identity, first of all, is not centralized or there is no uh, uh, you know, central way of verifying our identity. Okay, if I want to buy uh, something for a uh, go buy alcohol, I have to show my driver's license. Why is that? What is the connection between the driver's license? And that's why somebody can take my driver's license and buy it. And then who bought it? And a lot of this um, money laundering stuff, right? We, have uh, no way of tracking. Like, uh, think about COVID. Uh, how do you know is it vaccinated? So people say you cannot, uh, you don't have to wear a mask if you're vaccinated. Then somebody said, how do we know that they say they are vaccinated? There is no solid way of uh, knowing what you did, what your identity is, where it needs to be exposed, how much of it needs to be exposed, and how do you validate all that? Right? That's a big challenge uh, that we have. Just think about driver's license, right? The one question is, are you 21 years or older? But what do we provide? 14 answers. Date of birth, driver's license number, first name, last name, street number, uh, which city you were born, which day you were born, what's your color? What 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 does got my color to do with uh, ha having to buy alcohol, right? So we do not have control over what we expose for a specific purpose. All that, that a person needs to do is then are you over 21, right? But we, sh we show them everything and then expose our identity. And then the problem of the identities like all over the place, where is my data, right? Uh, are they protecting my data? We obviously know they don't. You know, look at the number of breaches, 140 million users from our, uh, you know, Equifax and uh, eBay, Marriott. And, and for every record, it's costing us $150 billion. And even think of other consequences. You know, recently in Syria, uh, when they bombed uh, everything and destroyed everything, there were engineers and doctors, everything is destroyed. So how do you know that this guy is a doctor if he goes and says, I'm a doctor, right? There's no way to prove uh, people's identity. A billion, close to two billion people cannot do banking. They have no identity, right? So it's a, it, identity is a, is a ma major challenge. So the World Economics Forum came up with some, as, how do we kind of standardize this? Like the way would we think about it is like a user says that, okay, here is uh, my attribute. 
like, a, you know, I studied at this place and here's my degree. And then the, 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 the third, let's take the university, right? I just want to say that, okay, I, this is the degree that I had. The university, what it does, it makes, validates your identity through a decentralized identity system. And the university itself has an identity in the decentralized identity system. And then it takes it, yes, okay, this guy has got a degree and I'm going to give you the credential. And then what you do is that since you've been validated, since the university has been identified, you keep this in your wallet saying, this is my degree. And okay, now you go, we want to get a job. And the employer says, okay, uh, show me your degree. The university, typically what happens, either you have to go to the university, everybody goes to the uh, university, get the same thing over and over again, but instead they come to you and say, uh, show me your degree. And then you take the request and then you say, okay, this guy can say, uh, see my degree and it is valid between now, if I don't get the job, I want to revoke it. And you give them the permission. Now, why is it trusted? Because the what we call the relying party has, knows who the identity is because the university identity has been validated through the decentralized ID. Your ID has been validated through the decentralized ID. And then the credential has been certified by the uh, identity provider. And now they just see, okay, does he have a BA? Yeah, that's all I need to know. I don't need to know which street the university was. I just want to know, do you have a BA? Okay, once I do that, period. And then I can take control of my identity and I tell them, okay, if you don't give me a job, um, uh, I don't want you to look at my record anymore. So that is what the decentralized uh, identity is uh, about. So the scenario that I talked about is here. So where does blockchain come in? And it's not necessarily blockchain. The reason blockchain is because we have cryptography, we have immutable record, uh, we have decentralization and, uh, you know, uh, uh, cryptography, it's there. So we use that for our identity. And where, like, for example, in the current system, we're going to create a digital wa a wallet in the a blockchain, and that's what we're going to use. But unlike Bitcoin, we're not going to store our transactions. We're not going to, uh, uh, you know, how... Uh, who did bought what, but it's going to be used as an identity platform. And then everybody has an identity. So this is even can be used for anti-money laundering. So everybody, there will be a clear identity that you get a digital wallet so that you know who, who, is the, who is the participant, who is the credential provider, who is the relying party. Everyone has an identity. And when we say identity, it is decentralized. What do I mean by that? It's not that go by Microsoft Active Directory the B2B or B2C. It is a standard compliant uh, digital identity that anybody can uh, host and be validated and it is scattered all over the place. As long as it's in compliance with the cryptography and the, um, and the standards, we can trust that identity. And once we have that identity, then people will give you a credential, you store it in your wallet, and if your phone dies, it's still, you can get it back with the digital wallet and you can uh, present it to the people and you can control what you want to present to the people, right? That's what the system is. The applications are endless, right? Everything uh, from uh, loyalty programs, um, in logistics, uh, anywhere that you want to know if it's uh, organically farmed uh, uh, coffee beans that you could um, uh, have a, a digital identity and verify that it is coming from the right place. So there are tons of places uh, where and like I mentioned before, what this will do is eliminate the middle people. I don't need to send an inspector to go and inspect and pay him something. That there will be other ways to say that, okay, this came from here and there is a digital identity. We know that it came from Italy, from this place and from this uh, factory because only they can um, uh, actually request that and their identity is already uh, uh, you know, verified. So it eliminates the middle people and uh, um, kind of only the participants for their services, they, they get paid. Uh, you don't get 20% just because you booked something through Uber or Airbnb. If they provide a mapping service, they get paid for it. If they provide an insurance, they get paid for it, but they don't take 20% of the entire transaction. So here, everybody has got their own identity, provide their own services and leverage uh, uh, the system. The thing is today, when we talk about identity, what's the thing that first comes to your mind? Username, password, right? But your identity is a lot more than username and password because it's everything that you do. When you buy at Amazon, you're a shopper. Uh, when you're uh, trying to apply for a job, you're a you know, student. Um, you are 
um, you know, with the passport, you have a citizenship, uh, you know, your, your uh, visa and all that. It's just more than your just username and password. But what happens everywhere, we have different username and password and everything. And, and, and you get annoyed. I get annoyed when I'm just uh, reading something. They say, well, why don't you use your Google ID to log in when you're reading? Why do I have to do that? Right? Everywhere, people are just trying to get your identity, sell it, abuse it. And then everywhere, it's, uh, everything is a different ID. Right? And that's not our identity. Our identity is something that we should be controlling, and we should be exposing, and it should be validated. And that's why the breaches are. You know that. Um, yeah, I was uh, Edge now has a great feature, and I, was, I went back and I kind of stored my passwords, uh, you know, using Edge and Authenticator, and it said 13 places my password is leaked. So now they find out all the vulnerable places where your pa the password that you used is somehow stolen. So it's kind of uh, uncontrollable now with so many systems, so many people storing our ID without any standards or control uh, over that. So what do the what do people want? So you know, I I think kind of highlighted all the problems. But how can we tackle this? The way you tackle this is that the individual should control uh, their identity. There should be, each organization should have a decentralized ID that is compliant with the standard. And uh, it it it'll, it anybody who wants to interact with you should have an ID that's verified. And the government, like for example, even now now Canada wants to open the border uh, across U.S. How do they know you're vaccinated? You know, a digital ID with credentials and validation would be great, right? Even um, a, 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 I, I just needed to transfer some money from one bank to the other. If I had a decentralized ID and the bank is as an ID, I can easily permit a specific transaction from one bank to another bank and shut it down after that. So there are uh, that's what that's the kind of control that we want with the identity. And so what Microsoft doing is what could we do? to integrate this uh, and the tools that we are uh, building is uh, uh, based on the demo, uh, based on the standards is what I want to talk to you about. Unfortunately, I cannot show you the demo, but uh, I'm just going to show you how this looks like. So, uh, so here is something. So in this side, uh, this is a very simplistic, you log in and you do this, and then you say get credential. So what will happen, and this can be, a time limited, so now I need to go to my phone, and then I'll go to my authenticator app, and uh, I'll just go and scan this QR code. And again, it's time limited, and uh, if I do this, now I just uh, uh, scanned it. Now what it will tell is, hey, you already own this credential, because I already did that. So this is how I'll get my credential. So you can think of very sophisticated, this is a very dumb uh, website, but. I'll have to log in, maybe provide other additional information and get this. And then what I'll do is another system that say, OK, I want to verify if this, this guy is a, a, very, a, a verifiable ID expert. So you say verifiable uh, credential, verify the credential. Now I go here. And then if I do this, you know, what it'll say is it'll scan now. I don't know if you can see that. And then I'll say allow uh, the thing. And then what it'll do is it'll take that, OK, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're a, uh, this is a valid one because it checked my credentials and said this guy is an expert and it's issued by a certain institute. And now uh, whoever is going to use this is convinced because I have an identity. The person who issued the credential has an identity. And the person who is requesting has an identity. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to deactivate this once this guy doesn't need any more, so the next time when he goes, he won't, uh, uh, he or she won't be able to see it. Not only that, they didn't get any other information. All the information they got was he's a credential expert and his standing is valid. That's all they got. They didn't get my birth date, my entire history, or anything. So I can restrict what uh, somebody can see. Right? So that's how it's going to work in a very simple way. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just just kind of uh, show you how this will work, either through a website like I showed, or through an email that say, hey, here's your digital student ID. Then what you'll do is you'll take your phone and say, I want to add this to the wallet, and you go to the Authenticator app. Authenticator app is now a digital wallet, right? So it's got a when you register, it gives you a digital ID, uh, and then you uh, say, okay, here's my student ID, 
and then you will accept it. Uh, and in order to accept, they'll ask you to sign, they may ask you fingerprint, uh, uh, everything else, and make sure it's you. And now your credential is added uh, into the wallet. Now, somebody else says that, hey, I want to know uh, if this guy is really a, a graduate, right? Or I go to a bookstore and I say, if you're a student, you can get this. And you, they say, okay, I want to verify your credential. Now, uh, you, you get a request saying that this guy wants to get your credential to know if you're a student. You accept it. Uh, and then again, you will uh, do this. As soon as you do this, now you can now get that 50% discount uh, from this. Now, even that person did not see anything about you, your name, your history, or your, your past purchase thing. They just simply verified uh, what it, you can do. Right. So this is, and I can revoke access once it's done, and it, it gives, uh, keeps track of all the activities. I can add credentials, uh, uh, more than my student, all the courses that I took. That's how the whole thing is going to work. Uh, that's the kind of system we are building. Now, it's all open source. While Microsoft is giving Active Directory as, uh, as the place for that identity hub, authenticator app, anybody who complies with the system, it'll work with uh, uh, that. So it's not just a Microsoft product, but Microsoft has taken the initiative in being part of the standard making plus building some of the tools to uh, um, uh, make it happen. So in a nutshell, this is how it's going to work, right? The identity hub, so like I said, blockchain is primarily used for uh, a digital ID. And it, right now it's on Bitcoin, it can be any decentralized ledger. It could be Ethereum or something else. And uh, everybody uh, gets an ID. And then the ID has got a certain specification so that you can resolve the ID and all the credentials will be stored in the identity hub. And then when somebody wants to get something, they'll make a request, and then we will look at it. Okay, this guy wants, who is this? Okay, I'm going to let him, and I, I'm going to let him see only my name and uh, my age, nothing else, and now I can buy liquor. So that's how uh, the system will work. Now, you can see that some of them are in implementation, some of them are published. So this is not a market-ready product yet, but hopefully this will evolve unless somebody else comes and say they want to do it differently. There's a digital identity federation that Microsoft is part of and a few others are all working together. So I'm kind of excited about what the, you know, the potential uh, for identity uh, leveraging some of the technology that's already there. So that's in a nutshell uh, of, uh, so I hope you understood the difference between identity, which is what the a digital wallet and the credentials are your degrees, your um, you know your credit, your um, any courses that you've completed, or your age. Everything else becomes credentials, which is issued by the authorities. So you don't go to the authority every time you want to verify. I don't go to university to find out if this guy graduated. The, I make a request. As long as my degree is not revoked, it'll be a valid one. So I do it once and there is a centralized way of controlling access and even controlling when and how much you want to access. So that's what the verifiable credential as a service uh, built on digital identity will do. And hopefully this will come to reality very soon. So a lot of the identity problems can be resolved. And that's all I have to say. Excellent, Raj. Great stuff. Very exciting technology. And we look forward to this and all these cool things that you're doing, as well as your music. Let me do a couple of things here. I've got to do some things. Um, uh, that We've got a couple of good uh, questions here. We're, the, the, this is why everyone is worried, you know, concerned about blockchain. Let me. Um, um, just out of curiosity, everyone's worried about this. Well, let's deal with one and then we'll talk later. Do you know what, and these are the general costs, but maybe if you could talk on how blockchain might coexist with other regulatory entities or guidelines such as GDPR or HIPAA? Yeah, I mean, in a way, I think the some of these identity tools can be a great facilitator of GDPR, right? Because let's say, think about identity. 
if I say that, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, my, uh, I put a restriction on my uh, credential or on a data, and I can say that, okay, when somebody makes a request, I can build rules around it to say that, okay, if the, if the data doesn't reside here or if the requester is not part of this, I can prevent them from getting access to the data. And even from a, like, I was talking to somebody, I made a presentation in another place where doing clinical trials um, um, and uh, uh, validating who you are and getting paid for these things, right? The blockchain can, in many ways, actually, what it does is gives you the transparency. So it is not another system like GDPR or things, but it can enable you to be GDPR compliant. It can enable you, give you the transparency, where did something start from and where did it go? Because the ledger technology where, like for example, in one of the same uh, scenarios I'm working with my customers in the supply chain uh, side of things, using IoT, right? If when something leave, uh, leaves a place, I can use IoT, create a blockchain record, then there is a visibility. And it's not in my SAP system or it's in something, but it's in a decentralized system. So any vendor wants to know where my goods are and what's been done, what was the temperature, they get access to it. So GDPR and other compliances will be facilitated by blockchain. 